Vitec builds the best truss assembly equipment in the industry. And we want to ensure that the high performance standards we strive for can be achieved safely. This video reviews basic safety guidelines for MyTech truss assembly equipment, including roof and floor truss presses, standalone conveyors, the finish roller, and stackers. It is intended to supplement an owner's plant safety program, not to replace anything already existing. Additional guidance for the safe operation of your MyTech truss assembly equipment can be found in the equipment manual for each piece of equipment. All personnel should view this video and read the manual in its entirety before using or performing any maintenance or repair activities on your MyTech equipment. Do not operate the equipment unless you have a thorough knowledge of its controls, safety devices, emergency stops, and general operating procedures. And always use extreme caution and common sense. Only personnel who are qualified by way of education, training, or experience should attempt to operate or maintain any MyTech equipment. First, let's talk about some basic safety guidelines. There is a restricted zone, sometimes referred to as a safety zone, around all our mechanical equipment. It is the area around the equipment that should be free of people while the machine is in operation. Some equipment manuals describe the restricted zone for that piece of equipment, but the following graphic shows the restricted zone for a typical truss assembly system. As you can see, all equipment included in our truss assembly line of equipment is within the restricted zone. Some simple reminders pertaining to the restricted zone that can be deadly if forgotten. Never stand on the tables while a gantry head is moving. Never walk between table aisles or standalone conveyors while assembly, pressing, or conveying operations are occurring. Never bend down or position yourself between or under tables where you cannot be seen by the operator without locking and tagging out the gantry head first. Never get your hand, limb, hair, or clothing near a gantry head or turning roller. Stay clear of all stackers and other components that can move, and be aware of when a truss starts moving toward a stacker. Never stand on or near a piece of equipment that is in operation, has trusses traveling across it, or could begin operation without notice. Truss assembly machinery is powerful equipment that can kill or maim if not used properly. Never attempt to use a piece of machinery to perform a function for which it is not designed. For example, never attempt to hand feed trusses into a finish roller which are too short to be conveyed on the outfeed rollers. Pneumatic flippers, pop-ups, ejectors, and receivers have dangerous pinch points and crush hazards. Ensure all personnel are off the tables and out of the aisles before actuating these components. For the safety of the operators, your equipment should not sit in or be surrounded by standing water. As with any mechanical device, it will operate more effectively if protected from rain, snow, and extreme temperatures. Not all machinery enclosures are waterproof. The area around the equipment and the aisles between tables should also be well lit and free of clutter. Never wear loose-fitting clothing, dangling necklaces, or large jewelry, or permit long flowing hair when operating or maintaining equipment. Safety glasses that do not impair or reduce your vision and hearing protection are imperative when operating or maintaining this equipment. Never wear dark sunglasses or anything else that might obscure your vision or limit your range of motion while operating or servicing machinery. Always activate an e-stop when the machine is not in use and prior to locking and tagging out for maintenance. Death, amputation, or other serious personal injury can occur if you are not careful and do not use safety devices and stopping methods provided. An e-stop push button may be found on the main electrical enclosure, on the control station, or on a pendant. Some presses are equipped with light bars for perimeter access guarding. Some also have bumpers that, when pressed in, stop the gantry head. Another stopping method common on roller presses is a push bar. 
never operate the press unless all guards, push bars, and safety devices are in place and operating correctly. You should periodically test these components to ensure they are working properly. Some manuals have a safety test procedure to assist you. Periodically, test the brakes on traveling gantry heads and watch for changes in stopping distances. Some gantry heads use brake monitors to communicate the status of the brake and the current stopping distance. Always pay attention to the warnings your brake monitor provides and refer to the manual to repair or replace brakes. Knowledge of safety indicators is also critical. Pay careful attention to the safety labels on the equipment and safety notes in the manual. If a safety label becomes worn or illegible, replace it immediately. This symbol indicates an imminently hazardous situation which, if not avoided, is likely to result in death or serious injury. This symbol indicates a potentially hazardous situation which, if not avoided, could result in death or serious injury. This symbol indicates a potentially hazardous situation which, if not avoided, may result in minor or moderate injury. Always observe and obey safety labels. If these labels show wear and tear, replace them immediately. Make sure that all people and objects are outside of the restricted zone before beginning movement of any equipment or component. It is the operator's responsibility to check for personnel in the restricted zone. If your truss assembly tables have walk-through aisles, make sure that nobody is in one of the aisles or on one of the tables in the path of the gantry head. Hazards may not be apparent to individuals unfamiliar with the press. Personnel working on or around the tables are also responsible for being aware of what the operator is doing and to notify the operator if you are entering a restricted zone. Lockout tagout. If you are performing any type of maintenance or could be in the path of a gantry head during operation, never bend or lie down in an aisle without locking, tagging out the gantry head first. This should never be done. Never stick your hand or any other body part in the path or vicinity of a gantry, roller, or any moving part. Respect all moving parts. If you are providing maintenance near parts capable of moving, follow approved lockout tagout procedures. Truss assembly machinery is powerful equipment that can kill or maim if not used properly. Always remember the power and strength of this equipment. No horseplay is allowed near the equipment. Guards must be in place and fully operational at all times when operating the equipment. Guards are intended to protect the operator and others near the equipment. Serious injury or death may occur if a guard is missing. If your system has a beacon light or sounding horn, do not operate the press without them. They are helpful tools to let people know when the equipment is going to begin movement. Before performing any maintenance or repair procedures, always lock out tag out in accordance with OSHA. Any energized component can be locked and tagged out, including electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic systems. You must lock out tag out the components you are working on, but also consider other components that can move. It may be wise to physically restrain hydraulic or pneumatic components when working on a separate system. Consult your own plant safety program. Guidelines for lockout tagout should be included in your company's energy control program. Electrical lockout means moving the on-off disconnect switch on the appropriate electrical panel to its off position and then locking it in such position with a padlock. If working on equipment outside and downstream in the electrical circuit from the equipment's main electrical enclosure, lock out tag out the main disconnect switch on the machine. Keep in mind that when this occurs, electrical power is still entering the enclosure at the disconnect fuses. So, if you need to enter the main electrical enclosure or work on the electrical transmission line going to the machine, always lock out tag out at the electrical service entry panel, usually located on the wall of your building. 
when de-energizing hydraulic or pneumatic systems, locate, turn off, and lock out the shutoff valve, if there is one. It is usually on the air regulator for a pneumatic system. A hydraulic system may have a master shutoff valve near the reservoir exit location. If you cannot effectively lock out tag out the shutoff valve, de-energize the air source, such as compressor or hydraulic power unit. Bleed the pressure from all lines when working on a component or line that can hold pressure. Tag out means securing to the padlock a prominent tag, identifying the person working on the machine. Never remove another worker's lockout tag from a machine. Preventive maintenance, such as conducting regular inspections, testing the safety features and stopping methods, and performing regular lubrication, will also enhance the safety and dependability of your equipment. Refer to your equipment manual for a complete list of preventive maintenance requirements. MyTech equipment gives you the power to perform, but only if you perform your job safely. Everyone who uses MyTech equipment knows that we design equipment to be productive and efficient. What you may not know is that during the design phase, we give just as much consideration to safety features as we do to performance features. But no safety feature in the world can take the place of careful operation and common sense. If you follow the recommendations given in this video, you will get many years of safe, efficient operation with your MyTech equipment. Help keep your coworkers safe by reminding them of proper safety procedures when operating MyTech equipment. It could save lives.